What's up everybody, Chevy Overlander here. We're at Points West Army Resort, just outside of Augusta, Georgia. And today we're gonna to be doing a product review on the Snowmaster Expedition Series 66 liter fridge. Stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this video. So this fridge is a fridge that I've had for just over a year now, year, year and a half. And it's been with me on almost every adventure that we've gone on from around Augusta, Georgia, up to North Georgia, down to Ocala National Forest in Florida, and all the way out to Overland Expo West in Arizona. Um, not last year, but the year before that. Um, the fridge is a dual compartment fridge which functions as both a fridge and a freezer depending on how you set it up so either of these two compartments can be the freezer or the fridge they can both be fridges which is how I have it currently set up or they can both be freezers um, for power use um, if you have them both set as freezers, they're going to work harder. It's going to run a little bit longer and take a little bit more power. Um, currently, they're both set as fridges. Um, with that, the power draw is not all that bad. Um, I say not all that bad. Um, I go about... Uh, Without running the vehicle, probably a little over 24 hours. Um, my Chevy Colorado only has one battery. Um, I have not upgraded to a dual battery system. That is the next thing on the to-do list. Um, however, the fridge on a normal overland expedition or trip uh, with running the vehicle every day will run forever as long as nothing happens to the main battery or anything electrical in the vehicle. Um, other ways to power this unit um, is by using a Goal Zero. Uh, this happens to be a Goal Zero uh, Yeti Lithium 1000, uh, which sometimes if I'm staying in one location for more than a night, I will hook the, um, I will hook the fridge up to the, the Goal Zero. One of the ways that I currently power the unit is this 12 volt port which I custom installed on the back driver's side of the truck. You can see that it's a uh, Blue C uh, 12 volt port, um, which battery runs uh, internally um, through the uh, fender panel of the truck, down the side, and up to the main battery. From there, the fridge, uh, the stock power cable, which I adapted to the Blue C uh, plug, uh, plugs into that and then runs to the back of the fridge. And back here we have a control panel um, that you can operate the fridge from. Uh, I have mine set to the rear because I like my doors to open uh, from the outside in when it's on the back. Um, and this, this works okay for me. Um, so from here you can control the temperature, turn the unit off and on, and set the battery voltage cutoff. Um, there's also pockets that you can store miscellaneous items, tools, um, or whatever you want. I've heard these are good for koozies, if you like to have koozies. Um, to give you a look inside the fridge, uh, this travel cover, which comes with the unit, uh, you just zip around. Um, it can be zipped all the way off, which makes it easy to clean and get inside of. Uh, I've only had to do that a few times and so like I said earlier this is a split unit so it has uh, two compartments the first is the smaller 30 liter compartment with two trays to hold food or beer or water uh, whatever you prefer and this compartment is normally what most people use as the freezer area uh, so you can set that to a lower temperature and store any frozen goods that you want, frozen meat, ice cream, 
Uh, having ice cream on the trail is quite the experience. And then this larger compartment, which is 36 liters, is the bigger compartment that's one side is really deep. Uh, the other side is about the same size as one of the trays on the other compartment. And uh, in this one, I like to put taller bottles or a coffee creamer or just larger items that sit taller than others. Um, I should also note that there is a drain plug in the bottom of each of these compartments. So you can take that plug out, you can uh, spray the inside down with water, and then you can clean out the unit. And that makes it super easy to clean. Um, I've sprayed mine out several times. Uh, I just take it out of the travel cover and then spray it down. The lids are also removable, uh, which makes it even easier to clean the top of those um, or spray the unit down. Considered buying several different brands of fridges uh, from ARB and Dometic. And what sold me on Snowmaster was what you get for the price. Um, after considering ARB, um, all the other accessories uh, added up would be almost the same price as a Snowmaster fridge. Um, and with one of those fridges, you'd have to buy the transit case or the remote control um, and all your other accessories if you wanted them. Uh, they don't come with those units. Unlike Snowmaster, shipped to your door, you have everything that you see here minus the power setup is obviously custom done. Um, it does come with a 12 volt DC plug cord and a regular household uh, 110, 120 volt cord as well that you can plug into the unit. Um, and that's actually what I wanna talk about next is the different power options that you have with this fridge. If you are just a weekend uh, traveler and you frequently go back to your house uh, during the work week, you can take the fridge out put it in your garage and plug it up to an outlet in the garage. Um, this comes in handy for keeping items cold in the garage, uh, beer, water, drinks, or even other food items if you need extra storage on the outside of your main fridge. Um, one of the unique things about this fridge is that it's auto sensing. Um, so at any time, if you have both components plugged in like we do now, um, I have the goal zero. I currently have the goal zero turned off. Um, the USBs are online, but we're, we're not using the 110 currently. Um, right now the fridge is running off the 12 volt, volt connection on the truck's battery, which is permanently wired. It stays hot um, all the time, all day, all night, 24 seven, so that when I'm on the go, I don't have, all I have to do is plug in the fridge and I know that it has a connection. Obviously I check to make sure that it's on connectors in tight but getting to the point um, if I were to turn this on right now the unit will sense that it has a one uh, 110 to 120 connection and then it will swap over from the 12 volt to the 110 120 volt um, so actually let me grab the camera off of here and I will show you that so right now you can see that the fridge is pulling off the trucks battery it also gives us a indicator of what the battery voltage is set at. And as soon as I turn on the goal zero, it will auto swap over to the AC power. So now the goal zero is turned on and as it spins up its inverter, it will swap over. And there you have it. The fridge is now running off of the AC power and will continue to do so until the goal zero dies. One of the great things about having the Goal Zero, uh, the Yeti 1000, is that you can plug in a solar panel connection uh, right here. Or it even has the Anderson plug, which mine kind of fell off and I need to fix that. But it has the standard eight millimeter round connection for the proprietary Goal Zero Yeti uh, solar panels, which I don't have one out here because I'm only out here for the day, but if you were to plug even a 100 watt panel up, it would connect to this and then 
in my experience, I've always generated more power from the solar than what the fridge uses even throughout the course of the day. So with extending the life of the Yeti uh, lithium battery, um, I've, ran, I've ran the fridge off of this battery pack for the duration of Overland Expo West and had no issues with doing so uh, with the supplemental uh, solar power. Now, like I said, running this fridge off the truck battery, if you're not constantly moving around, um, and at least running the truck every day, going to a new location, um, you'll probably run the battery down in uh, 24 to 36 hours. Um, it does have the voltage cut off, so the fridge will cut off uh, without completely killing your battery, but you may have to tailor that um, to your battery and to your vehicle's startup needs. The other great thing that comes with the Snowmaster fridge are these little remotes that are super handy. You can put one of these uh, up in your dash or somewhere where you can easily get to it, um, flip it on, it will connect to the fridge um, and then it will tell you the information on the fridge. So you can instantly see uh, both of your compartments and their temperature. You can see your battery voltage, or in this case, since we're still running off the Goal Zero Yeti, uh, it says that we're running off of AC. Um, and you can control all the aspects of your fridge from this remote. So you can turn it off. You can set the temperature for each compartment. Um, you can set the speed of the fan um, or the speed of the unit if, if you want it high and it constantly is running. Um, or lower if it's cooler outside or just set it on auto which is what most people including myself do so the fridge just works when it needs to work um, it also has a flashlight so if you're in the dark for whatever reason and you need a last minute light uh, there it is and then the screen also has a backlight now this remote um, has a charge port here for a micro USB um, but it also has the solar panel um, charging right here as well. So you could just throw it up on your dash or leave it outside for a few minutes and it's gonna be charged up. Um, I've had mine in the truck, um, just in the area by the glove box for hey, months now. That's like where this thing lives. And I've had no issues with the battery of the remote. It always comes on when I need it to. It always connects to the fridge when I need it to. And um, I really love the ability to reassure myself, um, you know, an hour or two into the trip that the fridge hasn't magically come unplugged when we're on the middle of the highway. And when I pull over and manually check it, I can instantly pull this up and turn it on and get all the results uh, from my fridge right here, right, right in the cab of my truck as we're going down the highway. So that really makes for a great little tool that you will use uh, a lot, um, at least I do. So on the inside of the fridge, uh, you may not have noticed it, but each compartment has an LED light, which is great for nighttime cooking. Um, if you do a lot of winter camping and it gets dark out super early, uh, when you get to camp and it's dark, there's two LED lights on either side that light up the entire compartment um, for each light. And um, I've never had any issues finding my food. Also, right here, we have a handy bottle opener, which uh, in this position, it's kind of hard to use. Uh, I just move the bed slide out and I can pop all the top soft bottles that I want to. Uh, these holes are pre-drilled and the cutouts on the uh, travel, um, travel cover are pre-done as well. And there's also a hole on the back side if you face your fridge, um, if, you f if I were to flip my fridge around um, and I wanted it to be on this side, I would have the bottle opener there. Um, and there's a lot of other places. Uh, one thing else I should also know, if you need to clean your fridge, uh, the drain ports that I mentioned earlier, the outlets are right here and right here. And 
they can be accessed through the travel cover. So that makes it really handy. You don't even have to take the travel cover off if you don't like to, um, and you can clean the entire unit. So we kind of already discussed a little bit of why I went and chose Snowmaster over other brands. And outside of the reasons that I've already covered, uh, by far the largest reason was social media. Um, seeing other users that had this uh, equipment that were doing uh, very long trips, very remote trips, um, as well as uh, seeing other truck builds uh, like mine with more of the open back environment. Um, I don't have a hard shell, so nothing is completely protected from the elements. Um, and after talking with several users that had had Snowmaster brand fridges um, and that were also using them on bed slides or with an open uh, bed uh, area, um, it kind of sold me on the decision to go with this brand uh, because most of them were uh, avid overlanders or travelers that were always going out and they had their fridges um, and their equipment in the back exposed to all the elements of uh, rain, uh, snow, um, hot, uh, sandy, um, everywhere from guys in California that dealt with the desert all the time to guys in the Pacific Northwest and uh, out here on the East Coast where we get a lot of rain and it's very humid and things in the back of your truck, uh, especially electronics, are more prone to be water damaged or um, you know something else happened to them. It's very humid here. Um, and with this fridge and with the people that I've talked to, they've had no issues uh, running this fridge. Um, there are several that I know, including myself, where this fridge is normally in the back of our truck a large time out of the year. Uh, normally, I take mine out for daily driving in and around town if I have to go get stuff. Um, but most of the time, uh, this, this fridge uh, in its current setup will sit in the back of the truck. Um, I also do not park in a garage, uh, only when I travel um, for long periods. Um, so this, uh, this unit is always out in the elements, it's always in the sun, it's always uh, in the rain if it rains, and it's held up tremendously. Um, it's, I mean, I cannot describe uh, how well built this product is. Obviously, per the user manual, uh, don't go soak it in water uh, on purpose. Uh, it's definitely not fully waterproof, but in the instance of being in the back of my truck bed, it's been completely um, okay, not harmed, uh, uh, being exposed to all of these different elements. Um, and the last thing that really sold me um, on the Snowmaster brand um, was the uh, USA distributor Todd. Uh, and talking to Todd after having some issues, uh, not necessarily related to the fridge, but just questions on wiring and setting everything up, um, he provided a lot of recommendations and truly went above and beyond um, the requirement of customer service. Uh, he had helped me uh, pick out some of the parts that I needed to make this entire unit install happen um, and I'm very very happy um, with how that turned out uh, so if you have any doubts at all about customer service of Snowmaster uh, they're probably second to none um, there's been times where I've lost my drain plugs uh, I've called them up and that same day they'll have a package uh, shipped out to me and a week later I'll get it and I'll get drain plugs. I've left uh, uh, my main uh, household 120 volt power cord at home before when I was in the middle of a trip. Uh, called them up and they sent me one to where I was at. And um, so the customer service is great. If you have any issues at all, um, they stand by their products and they're willing to go out of their way to help you and get you taken care of and set up and everything from the wiring to helping you install and uh, just everything if you lose anything or whatever. Also relating to installs, this fridge has 
threaded feet on the bottom of it. So if I were to not want to keep this strap down, I could actually bolt through the bed slide or whatever surface that I would have it on um, and secure it through the threads that already exist on, on the fridge itself. And from there, it would be more or less a permanent uh, install of sorts. So with that is our Snowmaster Expedition. This is the 66 liter. Um, I believe the product ID on the website is the EX67D um, for dual compartment. Uh, this is the smallest they currently offer for the Expedition series. Um, and then they have larger units all the way up to 90 liters, I believe. Um, so a great fridge, a great product. It will be with me on our next grand adventure, uh, taking 54 days of leave, uh, driving to the west side of the states, and then touring through Arizona, Utah, Idaho, Colorado, um, to Yellowstone National Park, to Glacier National Park, and this will be the centerpiece of our food and uh, cold storage needs. So thank you all for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more product reviews, adventures, and anything else that we decide to throw up on this channel. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And please, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach me.